MySQL version 8 has an interesting feature called Atomic DDL, and it's not what you think. Let's get into it. So MySQL version 8 has this one of these features that's called Atomic Data Definition Languages, which is, guys, if you're not aware, DDL is a, the ability to create tables, uh, inserting columns, altering schema, things that you do to define the uh, the schema of your of your tables, right? And for the longest time, these operations, when you execute these, they actually commit anything. They are they are actually essentially atomic transactions. And that means when you do like a bunch of DMLs, like uh, you begin a transaction and you insert a bunch of insert statements in a table and then you create a table, that the act of actually creating the table will commit your, uh, your rows, which is something you might not want to do, right? And for the longest time, DDL operations are undoable. Once you do it, you do it. There is no rollback coming off from that. Okay. And when I heard that Atomic DDL is supported in MySQL, it's like, oh, that's actually essentially great. I can. That means I can begin a transaction. That I can actually create a bunch of tables. I can uh, essentially upgrade my database. Like if you're maintaining an application, you can write a script that upgrades your database. And if something happened in your script, you can roll back. And all of the DDL changes will be rolled back. And that is not what it looks like. <laughs> MySQL 8, no. Atomic DDL, apparently, it's it's a singular DDL operation, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna show that an example in a while between the difference between Postgres, which they have a, a true undoable DDL operations, which is most probably called the correct terms as transactional DDL, where you can essentially begin a transaction and you can do anything you want. And once you roll back, all of that stuff will be rolled back. For the Atomic DDL in MySQL, they essentially are talking about single atomic statement. So that's an example, right? So in this example, they are creating a table called T1, and then they are trying to drop table T1 and T2 in the same statement. So this is called an atomic DDL. And previous, prior to version 8, MySQL 8, what will happen is like, okay, T1 exists, but T2 doesn't exist, right? So what will happen prior to MySQL 8, this table will be dropped, but this table obviously doesn't exist, so you'll get an error, right? So you'll get a kind of an inconsistent state in your in your database, right? Where you actually, you drop this table, but this table already exists. So it's kind of weird, right? So what they did essentially, if, if any of these table doesn't exist or something failed, they rolled back the whole thing. So in this case, after showing the table, they show you that, hey, by the way, we didn't drop your table, okay? But that is doesn't scale on the whole transaction level. So for example, if you're dropping a table and then you're dropping a column and you're inserting a new column and, and, and that let's say that column existed and that failed, tough luck, right? Your, your, the whole of DDLs that happened before actually got committed, right? So let's show an example on Postgres. Let's show an example of MySQL so I clarify this, uh, this thing. So in Postgres, guys, I'm in Postgres, I created a Postgres container and I made a lot of videos about how do you spin up your Postgres container here and play with that stuff. So I'm going to begin a, a transaction here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table I'm going to call it test1 okay? and let's do id serial. Okay? The moment I do that, I can create another table, test2, and I call it also id serial. And if I do, is that how you show tables? Yeah. In, in Postgres, they're there, right? There are two tables. But if I do roll back, right? And then I do dash T, those tables don't exist anymore. 
Remember, this is a powerful thing in Postgres. Postgres supports transactional DDL. So if I create a table, create another thing, I do DDLs, I do DMLs, you can roll back all of that stuff with Postgres, okay? I don't know which version was introduced, but it is there, right? This is the latest version, which is, I think, 12. Right, so Postgres supports transactional DDL, so you can roll back your transaction. Let's go to MySQL and show you that it actually does not the case. So in MySQL, let's do the same thing. Let's do uh, a begin, and I'm gonna create a table uh, called this one, and whatever, ID integer. And I'm going to create another table called this two integer. And then if I do uh, show tables, that's how you show tables in MySQL. You, you see the, all both of them are there, but the one I do, they're all back, right? And I do show tables, <laughs> the tables are still exist. You cannot roll back transactions that include DDL, right? The only thing you can do is like say, hey, if you try to drop table, drop table, table uh, test one, test two, and test three, right? This exists, this exists, but this guy doesn't exist, so you get an error. So the whole thing actually, the whole transact, the mini atomic transaction were, was rolled back. So if you do now show tables, your tables still exist, obviously, right? Because it didn't run. So that's what atomic DDLs. And I just wanted to clarify that message that MySQL does support atomic DDL. It does not support transactional DDL. I just, just you know, I wanted to make a quick video to describe the difference between the two. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you like it. I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome.